Hello and welcome back to the MATLAB tutorials regarding a thermodynamical problem. My name is Manuel Ramsayer and in this video I will show you how to do a 3D plotting with two different parameters on an equation we want to um, look at. In this case we want to measure the heat transfer through a pipe and um, as we saw in the last tutorial this depends on the diameter of the pipe itself um, if the mass flow is held constant because the velocity changes and therefore the Reynolds number. But in this case we want to add a different parameter to it and for the matter of simplification I will just use an existing one, in this case um, the length of the profile. So we start by deleting the length and setting it up here. Length of the profile equals 1 with step size 1 to 10 meters. length of profile and now a function comes in which is called mesh grid just simply show that to you if you have a vector a and it's 1 to 3 and a vector b which is 2 to 4 Then you can call a function called mesh grid and you do that with the syntax matrix a comma b is equal to mesh grid curve brackets a comma b. What this does it changes the vectors a and b to matrices where the first vector is line wise um, there in the matrix and the second vector is column wise in that vector. right? And you can use that later on for once setting your diameters in the line wise direction and B, in this case your length of the profile in the column direction. Okay, you will see that uh, right uh, in the tutorial. I think that then it will get more clear. All right, now. The thing is that the number of elements cannot be used as a border anymore. Here we refer to the number of elements and with a vector that's possible, but with a matrix you get 9 elements in here. And 9 is not the number of your vector, you, uh, your originally uh, scripted vector with 3 elements, so we just have to implement borders here. And you do that by just um, typing in Lmax, for example equals numl of l. And the same you do that for the i max equals numl of the i. Should be an d here. Okay, you do that before the mesh grid operation. Alright? That's very important. Now, right after um, the definition of the two vectors, you do your mesh grid operations because you don't want to um, do a calculation before it and uh, affecting it. So, um, matrix di, comma l equals mesh grid di, comma l. So that's your uh, mesh grid operation. You can put a semicolon after the after the sentence each time to suppress the output. Now I, I uh, let that happen here and um, just to show you what it does. For later on we put a halt mark here. Now what you need to change is uh, the looping sequence. All those calculations will get done with the matrices and that's no problem. But for the looping you just want to loop with your length as well. So you have two loops, one loop in another and the inner loop uh, here strongly depends on, the, um, on how you put your um, values here. So if you put L before the I you should first um, loop about the i and then about l. In this case we loop about l 
at the as the outer loop and we will do that by putting here L max and for the inner loop we just uh, name a, another index in this case j equals 1 to um, the i max this auto completion is done with tab just uh, if you're interested how I do that and we need another end at the end of both loops and then it should run. The thing is, we didn't define a dependency on j. So for this reason, you have to replace i with i comma j. Okay. And you do that with um, the find and replace tool, i with i comma j. Did that once before and replace all. And then you have your dependency on i and j. Now, the thing is, you have to change the plot as well because you're not plotting anymore but you're meshing and there is a um, function called mesh which uh, does your 3d plot and you have to define your x y and z variable for that reason x would be the i and y would be l and z would be q those change as well Y label turns into the set label and Y label is um, the length. All right, let's give it a go. I think maybe we just look at the common output things in here, operation double dot is seldom used in Scala content, that's right, I, yeah, there's an error in here, L equals 1 to 110, yeah, that's correct now, and all those others, um, they are not important because uh, they want to just want to uh, pre-locate the memory, as I told you once before, and we're not interested in speed, not yet. Okay, now let's run that program and I'm uh, going step to step by step through it. So in here the mesh grid did happen and you see that di and l changed to 10 by 91 um, number of elements matrices. And now let's see if the calculations are correct or even if they are working. The surface areas are also done in this case element by element matrix wise and that's for that reason is um, why we're doing that so just suggest that that would be your millimeters in diameter every surface area will get calculated here with uh, the um, with the diameter one millimeter two millimeter three millimeter and element wise with two two and two meters of same length Next length would be 3 meters, and 3 meters would also get with 1, 2, and 3 millimeters of diameters. So both parameters are um, considered and therefore will get you the ab ability to do a 3D uh, mesh later on. Okay, we'll just continue here, and we get an error. Index exceeds matrix dimensions. Um, in this case, it was just that we um, swatched the, the two variables here. Um, we have in one dimension, uh, we have 91 elements and in the second dimension, we have um, 10 elements. But I see that i is 11. So I'm uh, supposing that there is a mistake somewhere here, which should say i is i plus one. Yeah, right here. We don't need to do that because it's all, it's all just um, inside the loop done. So you don't have to worry about i equals i plus one. You would do that in a in a um, do until loop, something like that. But in the for next loop, um, the index will get taken to the next level by the loop itself. So that was just a, an error that we did. It uh, did not affect the correctness of the uh, of the output at the last time. But in this case, we get to the number eleven, and that's one number 
too much for the matrix to handle. So we run that again. Now it's working. And you see a 3D plot coming right here where you can see the dependency of the variables. You can rotate it and export it as a MATLAB figure or something like that. In the next video we will cover the basics how to slice uh, a cut through there. Slice, slice it out here and just see on a 2D plot how this curve is um, depending of one variable at a fixed other variable. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and I uh, will be glad to see you back shortly.